Good morning, dear listeners. What a privilege it is again to bring you God's Word. How often during this pandemic uh, did we hear the saying, the church is not closed, the buildings are closed. We also heard the saying, don't just go to church, but be the church. Two weeks ago, Pastor Joe spoke about this. Therefore, I want to continue to talk this morning about how the Bible portrays or picture the Church of Christ. But first, what is the Church? The Church is the community of all true believers for all time. Religion is corporate and this has been so from creation. In Genesis 9 and verse 8, God said to Noah and his sons, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you. Don't the coming of Jesus to this earth reflect that community? Jesus came to this earth for the salvation of people. Did we not miss that togetherness the past 18 months? However, we thank God for the opportunities we had to spread his word and just be serving one another. How do I become part of the church? Or how do I become part of that community of believers or the true believers? That group of people, Ephesians 5 and verse 25 says, Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. If Jesus Christ would give his life for that group, don't you want to be part of that group? Images of the church are there many about to talk this morning, but I want to highlight a few biblical pictures. Uh, but the ones I want to refer to are, for instance, one, the people of God. 1 Peter 2 and verse 9, 1 Peter 2 and verse 9, it reflects, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praise of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. People of God, yes, the elect, who are they? Called by God. As God's people, we are the elect of God chosen by God and not on my ability or my conduct. It is purely by grace, not on any work that I have done. Now there are various theological thoughts about this that we don't have time to discuss. In short, if you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you have been born again. And what a privilege to be called God's elect. The church is essentially the living community of those who have responded to the call of God. It also says, you are a holy nation. That don't mean I am perfect. Perfection comes 
at glorification. And that is only when I am in heaven. However, because I have an advocate in heaven, that is how God sees me now with all my defects. Even when Satan wants to come and betray that before God, my advocate, the Lord Jesus Christ, he will fight, fight my case for me. And he has never lost any case against Satan. Yes, as people, we're not only the elect. We are a family of God. We can see this as a separate image. But I want to put it under people of God. Because we as we are his children, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. I love that song. We are heirs of the Father. We are joint heirs with the Son. Yes, we are family. We are one. We are not heirs because of my natural birth, nor of creation. We are heirs because I am a child of God. I am an heir of God because I am redeemed from the curse because Christ was made a curse for me. I'm an heir of God because I'm a joint heir with His Son, Jesus Christ. What a privilege to be raised to the status as children of God. Another image of the church is the second one, the body of Christ. Second Corinthians or <coughs> First Corinthians 12 and verse 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. We are baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit, a body as a head. And Christ is that head of the church. Christ being the head implies that all our life, all our nourishment flows from Him. We live out of Him, from Him, through Him, and unto Him. Yes, as people of God, we are not elect. We are just not a body. Ah, but we are members of Him. Or as the body, we are members. As Ephesians 4 and 11 say, And He gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. With the church being the body of Christ, the Holy Spirit empowers the church with different giftings to be used to the glory of God. God's spiritual gifts to His church include both the individual gifts uh, or giftings of every believer, as well as the gifted men called apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers. The body of Christ is not an individual attempt, but it's collective. The head is joined to the body. Christ is joined to us. So we uh, should not be ashamed to be joined to the body of Christ. If you feel separate from the body or the church, because you're ashamed to be attached to that body? The church as the body, how Christ work through the church. Not only can a body part not be dislocated from the body, 
it also uh, should be an active part in that body. Yes, each member plays an important role, just like each a body part plays an important role. The eye, the nose, the mouth, my hands, my feet, it all forms one body and to function effectively, the one is not more important than the other. Yes, another point, the church is the bride of Christ. In the Old Testament, God speaks of Israel as the bride. We can find that in Isaiah 54, verse 5 to 8. It's also reflected in Isaiah 62 and verse 5. Or in Jeremiah 2, verse 2. That bride was unfaithful. Who was that? The Jews, the Old Testament. Uh, they were unfaithful to God. Yes, Jesus referred to himself as the bridegroom. In the revelations, that is future. He will present the bride unto himself. If we want to be good, husband, just look at Christ as your role model, as your bridegroom, and imitate Christ. If you want to be a good father, get to know God the Father. How does Christ love his bride? Christ, he gave his life for his bride. Is that not a great picture of love? Love so amazing, so divine, demands my life, my soul, my all. What a great hymn that we used to sing. As the bridegroom, he nourishes his church. He builds the church up. Ephesians teach us, Husbands, love your wives as Christ love the church. We need to take care of our wives, but also take care or good care of ourselves, my body. Don't neglect your own body. When Jesus will uh, present his bride to uh, the Father. That bride, she will be a radiant bride. She will be without spot or blemish. And that reminds me of the hymn, Oh, that will be glory for me, glory for me. Well, through the ages, be glory for me. Amen. A fourth image of the church is the church of Christ is the temple of God, the building of God. 1 Corinthians uh, 3 and verse 16 to 17. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Verse 17 says, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple are you? In the Old Testament, <coughs> pardon, uh, God presents, uh, was, or God's presence was referred to as we looked in the tabernacle or Solomon in the temple, Jesus referred to the fact that the temple was no longer the place of God's abode. In the New Testament, the church was created as the body of Christ, the new temple of God's presence. Now the verse referred to what destroy God's temple. The temple means people of God, those in whom he lives. Paul was speaking 
about the disputes and the division among the Corinthians. And that division, it threatens and it wanted to destroy the church. God's dwelling. When the followers of Apollos pitted themselves against the followers of Paul, or when arrogant believers scorned others whom they considered to be spiritual inferior. God's temple was being damaged. Let us guard against division in the church, because as we said, division causes damage to the church. And the fifth image of the church, it's the flock of God. Now flock, I have a shepherd. And when I talk about a shepherd, immediately your mind goes back to uh, Psalm 23. And Jesus makes this position his own as the shepherd. Jesus is the chief shepherd of God's flock. What a privilege to be part of the flock, being cared for by the chief shepherd, Jesus Christ himself. Psalm 23, Psalm of David, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And I want to quote for you the second verse. He maketh me to lie down in grain pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. David, as a shepherd, he knew how dangerous it is for sheep to lie down. When a sheep lie or land on his back, all the blood flow to one position. The balance of that sheep causes it that it cannot come back on to its feet alone. The sheep then needs the help of a shepherd to turn it around. The shepherd cares for that sheep and the shepherd look out for dangers. The shepherd look out for the wealth and well-being of that sheep before it dies or wild animals get hold of it. That is how our shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, cares for us. He provides for us. He protects us. Then He protects us from dangers. Yes, there are other images and metaphors in the Bible uh, that the church are being identified with. But I will just speak to this and I will close with this. Five that I've mentioned you. We as God's children who are part of the church should ensure that we don't twist God's word and that we must ensure that we preach the truth. Not our own words, not twisting God's word, but also be careful what you listen to. When I listen to God's word, is it the truth that that preacher is speaking? Is he speaking God's holy word? Yes, where you gather, the sacraments are it being administered according to Christ's institution. We should also neglect the great commandment of love. That includes serving and the great commission of missions to take God's word to the end of the earth. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word that is sharper than a two-edged sword. But your word is also a light unto our feet and it's a lamp unto our path. Our Father, we pray that we will regard your word as holy. You, we will regard your word as the authority of you himself, O oh God. 
and that we will not twist it. Father, we ask that you will come and that you will just come and bless each listener this morning. We thank you that we can be part of your universal church. Bless the word as it went out this morning. Bless our listeners, O oh God. And we ask that your Holy Spirit will convict them. Your Holy Spirit will empower them. That your Holy Spirit will also give them strength to be faithful and true unto your word. Also be true and faithful unto the bridegroom and the teachings of your word. Bless us as we ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you, dear listeners. Have a great week. Amen. Thank you.